<laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm excited to be here and talk with all of you. So just a little bit about me um, so that you know where I'm coming from with this class. Um, uh, I grew up in San Jose, California. I started using Photoshop back when it was version 2.5.3, limited edition. Uh, but it was super basic. Um, and um, I, I've used it pretty much ever since um, for all sorts of uh, various products. Um, I, I won't profess to be a Photoshop master, um, but I, I have a basic understanding and I, I love helping people recognize the tools that exist uh, to help them uh, with, with the things that they need. So let's start with what kind of Photoshop to get. Um, and I'll talk about this because this comes up every time. So I've prepared a few things on this. So, boom, hopefully y'all can see my screen here. All right, so um, Photoshop is put out by Adobe. Um, and there are a few different kinds. Um, your, your basic versions of Photoshop are just regular Photoshop. It's called Photoshop CC um, for Creative Cloud. Um, I, should, I thought I had the other page pulled up. Where is my <laughs> creativity and design? So if you're gonna, if, if you want to, to purchase Photoshop, um, it's done on a subscription basis. Um, you can come here and click on Photoshop and you'll see if I um, click on buy now, um, it's going to pop up the price uh, for individuals. There's, there's discounts if you're students. Um, let's see, continue. So it's $20 a month. But if you're just going to get Photoshop, I would not come to this page. So what you do is instead you come just to the main Adobe page, adobe.com. Right now they have a Black Friday deal, so that's awesome. You should do that if you want to buy it. Um, but under Creativity and Design, click on Photographers. And they have a Photoshop and Lightroom plan. And if you hit Buy Now, even if you only use Photoshop, bump -ba -da -ba for individuals, continue. It's only $9.99 a month. So if you're going to buy the Photoshop subscription, um, do this one. It's a lot cheaper. Um, and then um, I think you can pay for it all at once for a year if you want, or, or you can pay month by month. If I recall, the, the, the year amount is a little bit cheaper. Or it's about, it's exactly the same. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, so if you're going to do it, I would do this bundle um, because it's a lot cheaper. Um, um, uh, they also have Photoshop elements. Um, uh, let me pull up the price. I want to say it's about $100. Um, and this is a one-time purchase. So it's, 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 um, that's not what I meant, wanted. I should read what I'm clicking on. Photoshop elements. Uh, so Photoshop elements is not a subscription. So you just pay for it once. And oh, even better, uh, $59. So yeah, I told you I was 100, so you'd like this better. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so um, <laughs> um, that's an option for you. Um, there are also some, some, some free alternatives. Um, so uh, I just want to highlight a couple. One of them is called, um, oh, let's see, where'd it go? <laughs> did I close it? I think I did. Uh, it's called Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R. So pixlr.com, here, I'll throw that in the chat. Ooh, if I can, I don't, maybe I can't throw that in the chat. Um, Zoom, can I see the chat? There's the chat. Okay, perfect. There's Pixlr. So Pixlr is like a simple version of Photoshop. So if you click on it, um, it gives you all the same tools. Um, there's a free version. There's also like a paid version. But um, anyway, um, I came here earlier and just dragged this picture in. A lot of the tools are really similar to Photoshop itself. Um, um, and and it, it's web-based. So you don't, even, you don't even install a program on your computer. Um, it's pretty robust. A lot of the, the, the tools are, are similar. If you hover over them, it will, it will describe what it is, just like it does in Photoshop. So um, 
and they all, most of them look almost identical. So it's, it's a really easy, you know, flip from one to the other and you can do some cool stuff. Um, anyway, so, so Pixlr is one I recommend uh, because it's free and you can just use it quickly. It's not as robust, but for most things you're gonna do, you could probably do it here. Um, Paint.net is, is um, an alternative as well. It's a free program. You can download it. Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a program that, that, you, that you would download on your computer. Um, I believe they have a, uh, it's just for Windows. They may have a Mac version too. Maybe not. Um, anyway, so th those are two alternatives that are free. Um, also, if you come to the Family History Library um, on campus, if you're able to come, uh, you can use Photoshop while in the library. So, awesome. Uh, Pixlr, Paint.net, um, GIMP. Um, GIMP. GIMP has um, uh, versions for both Mac and Windows. Um, great programs. Um, and you, again, you can do almost all the same things. Um, let's jump to... Um, Oh, and, and just a comment on Photoshop Elements. Photoshop Elements um, uh, has a lot of the same features. And for most people, it's going to have everything that you're going to need from the regular Photoshop. Um, uh, Photoshop's a little more powerful. It has a, a little more under the hood, but you can do most things in Elements. Um, and Elements is easier to navigate. So if you're not super tech savvy and things, they they change terminology from things like a photographer might know and understand, like, you know, um, when talking about, you know, um, exposure or, 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 or um, sharpness or whatever. And, and they use terms that are, that are easy for anyone to understand. So um, that's another great piece for elements. Um, I'd love to jump into some things. Um, let's see. Someone in here asked about, um, cleaning up old dirty photos, um, image integrity for research. Let, let me do an image integrity one real fast because it's relatively quick and really simple to do. So um, I have Photoshop open here and I'm gonna grab hard to read is what I called it. Okay. So <clears throat> just some basic navigation in Photoshop. On the left-hand side here, are your tools. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Can you see my mouse? Um, um, the left-hand side are, 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 are your tools. And when you click on a tool, it will change the options across the top here. Um, so um, it's kind of, you select your tool and then the options for that tool change across the top. Um, on the right here, you, you have some, some windows. These are kind of the default windows that, that, that will pop up on the right. Um, you, you can access different ones, or if you can't find the one you're looking for under the window menu, you, you, you can select the ones. Um, the, almost anyone who's using Photoshop is going to use layers. So um, make sure you, you see that one if you're using Photoshop. Um, and then um, adjustments are also, I, I, I find really helpful. I want to describe what a layer is because if you've never done this, it can be a little confusing or it can be really confusing. So um, think of a layer um, as I have this document um, right now, it's, uh, that we're on layer background and think of it like a piece of paper um, sitting on the desk. And then think of a layer as putting another piece of paper on top of that one. Um, the cool thing is, is you can line things up perfectly and they, they're not going to uh, get moved around like, like pieces of paper would, but, but it's, it's placing different pieces of paper on top of each other, but you can cut holes in them and you can um, make edits to things and, or, or you can edit one layer and it's not going to affect the layer below it. And then you can kind of erase parts of it and, and different things like that. Um, there, um, some, some layers are, are, are invisible unless you like draw on them or, or, or put text down. And so I always like thinking of those like transparencies, you know, for from those of you that are familiar with uh, uh, overhead projectors. Uh, anyway, um, so, so that's what layers are. Um, so if I duplicated this layer, um, you, you can do that by right clicking on it and hit duplicate, or you can drag it down to this little plus um, right there. Um, that duplicates the layer. So then I could come over here and grab a tool such as a paintbrush 
and I can, you know, scribble all over it, whatever I want. Oh no, I accidentally messed up my, 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 my document. That's okay because you have it underneath. These little eyes um, on the layer icon, um, if you click that, um, the eye disappears. It means you can't see that layer. It's still there. You just can't see it. So um, layers are great. I use them a lot just to, you know, um, if, if I'm making an edit on something, I'm going to duplicate it and, and work on a layer so that um, I, I can always go back to the original um, or, or, or part of the original. Um, and so um, sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to, but layers are awesome. So um, I really don't want this one anymore. So I can either drag it down to the trash can or I can right click it and hit delete layer. Bum, bum, bum. I don't see the lead on here. I'm blind. I'm just gonna drag it to the trash can. Okay, so we have a document here that's a little tricky to read. Um, so I'm gonna click on my zoom tool. Oh, the cool thing is if you hover over a tool, it kind of tells you what it does. Um, and um, some of them will have a little um, letter right here. That Z means if I hit Z on my keyboard, it's gonna select that tool. Um, so if I come up here to my marquee tool, I can hit M for marquee. So I hit M, now I have my marquee tool where I can select part of the document and I could copy it, um, either Control C or um, go up to copy. And if I hit paste, what's gonna happen? It's gonna paste it. But if you notice down here on the layer, it's gonna paste it on a new layer. So um, if I hide my bottom layer, it's just gonna show the part I copied and pasted. Um, this checker pattern that you see means it's transparent. So if there's something underneath it, then you're gonna see that coming through. Um, okay, hopefully that's helpful for layers. Um, let's see here. Okay, so if you have a document like this, um, I'm gonna talk about something called levels. Um, I'm not gonna go into tons of detail on it because I've gotten feedback that uh, that can be um, that can be tricky um, or it's a little too intense. But on my adjustments panel, um, if you hover over these different icons, it tells you what they are. This one's brightness contrast, this one's levels. I'm gonna click that. And what it did is it created this layer that's a special layer that says, I'm going to affect the way this document looks for everything you can see below it. So I'm going to create this layer and then it pulls up this histogram. Um, and in short, what, what this means is it takes all the, the color information from the document and it maps it from complete black all the way to white. Um, often, if you want to sharpen up an image really quick, you grab these, you, 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 you do a, a levels adjustment layer and you drag these little triangles in. And I always just think to the bottom of the hill. So I'm going to slide this one in all the way to the bottom of the hill. And I'm going to slide this one in to the bottom of the hill. And essentially what it's doing is well, when I slide the one on the right, it's saying everything, um, the, the further I slide it, it, it changes more and more things to be white. Um, the, the one on the left is every, the, the further over I slide it, it will turn everything. But so I slid it all the way to the right, everything would be completely black. But this is really great to try and like um, darken this up and then you can lighten up the, the white space so it's easier to read. And then the middle one adjusts your, 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 your mid tones. So you can kind of play with it. Um, let's see, I wanna zoom in here so I can actually see what's going on a little bit. This is a really rough one. Um, I think I actually, I, I thought I downloaded the full resolution one. <laughs> I think I downloaded a less than full resolution. That's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> Anyway, this is a poor example. <laughs> That's why you always open all your files before you do a presentation. Um, but um, if, if this were a higher resolution, you'd be able to read it. Let me see if I can find another one that's harder to read. Um, is this one difficult to read? Let me see here. Nope, that one's just fine. Um, 
I thought I had some in here that were difficult. Nah. Um, anyway, um, I'm sorry this is a poor example. Um, but uh, yeah, you just bring these sliders to the bottom of the hill and you, you just adjust them. And it, it, you, you can actually bring back a lot of stuff uh, that's really hard to read. Um, in this case, th this image is so low resolution, you're going to be really hard pressed. Um, what you'd want to do is you want to go back to the original document. Um, I know I cleaned this one up before. I'm wondering if I looked up what the source was and found the original and downloaded a higher resolution and did this because I, I, I actually did clean this one up a while back for my aunt. So um, let's see. Okay, would you be able to clear up this, the, the document? Yes, I could if I had a better document here. Metadata is built into some modern um, GPS, can use it through these programs. What's the best resolution? Okay, so best resolution. That's a great question. Um, if you're gonna print something, you want it to be at 300 pixels per inch. Um, so let me pull up an image here. Let's grab, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just grab this one. So we have an image here. Um, if you go to, oh my goodness, what am I doing? If you go to um, image, image size, this will tell you the size of the image and the resolution. By default, it keeps all three of these things linked. So if I change one of these, it doesn't actually change anything other than how it's gonna print. So if I change this to 300 pixels per inch, okay, this image I think was already a really nice big one. So I could print this one at 14 inches by 21 inches at 300 pixels per inch, no problem. Probably because it's already been enhanced. Um, but well, let's, just, let's just do this. Let's grab a picture. Let me search. Oh, 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 I thought I was already signed in. All right. Let's just grab a picture. I have no idea what this is of, but someone that I'm related to here. All right, um, let's download it. Uh, it's a photocopy, so it's not going to be a great image, but let's just see how big it is. So if I bring this picture in here, image, image size. So if I were to print the, oh, this is also a pretty big one. So if I hit 300 pixels per inch, it's gonna be five by eight. So that's pretty good. Let's say you wanted to print it bigger. <clears throat> what I would do is you click this resample and they have different levels here. Usually I like the preserve detail 2.0, um, but uh, you, can, you can leave it on automatic, De depending on what you're doing, that might be better. But if you check the resample and you, you can up the size. So actually let's just, I'm gonna downsize it for a minute. I'm gonna downsize it quite a bit here. That way I can kind of show you. So, so if, if this were as big as it were, if I went up to image image size and I said, oh, okay, let's see. I want to print this five by eight, um, but I want to print it at 300 pixels per inch. That's going to print one inch by two inches. So I could hit resample and then I could change this to five inches and it's going to do its best and it's going to up the resolution for you. Um, this is kind of cool. Um, the, the, the program is pretty powerful in, in trying to keep details. Um, it's always better if you can get a higher resolution to begin with. Um, but uh, 300 pixels per inch is generally what you want to do. Now, if you're going to print like a billboard or even like a two by three foot something, you don't really need that to be 300 pixels per inch because it's not designed to be looked at as close, like as physically close as um, as an actual photograph, um, but uh, you're looking at it from a little further away. So for, for something like that, if you're doing like, like you know, um, uh, 
uh, two feet by three feet poster type thing, you could probably get away with 180 pixels per inch and be just fine. Um, best resolution for documents on family search, family tree. Um, then um, a, a general uh, thing you could do would be, um, uh, again, how big would someone want to, 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 to print this? 300 pixels per inch. Um, is is a good standard. Um, they, they they used to say if you're doing text like um, like like a newspaper or 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 or, or, or book like so something where there's a written text, they, they they used to say to scan that in at 600 pixels per inch. Um, you can, but printers have improved a ton in the last few years, and so I would actually just keep it at 300 pixels per inch for most things. Um, some things can be too large. Um, someone in here is saying that they had a file that's too large for family search, um, more than 15 um, um, uh, megabytes or something on there. Um, I don't know what their limit is off the top of my head. If it's too large, um, you could drop the resolution. And Photoshop's a good program to do that in. Uh, other programs can, can do it as well. Photoshop's algorithms work really well to try and enhance things as you enlarge them. It's always easier to go smaller than, than, than larger. Um, okay, let's see. If we knew the original, can you overwrite or clean up poor resolution information? Um, yeah, so, so um, on, on, this, on this one here, I think what I did is I, 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 I looked, figured out what it was or asked my aunt where, where she got it. And I looked up the original document and I scanned it in or, or, or it was online and I, I downloaded a full resolution, I think is what I'd done. So, okay. Um, let's see here. Let me just see if I can pull up that image that I'd done before. Let's see, it's on my aunt's Facebook. I think it was on my Facebook. Let me see if I can find that real fast for you, just so you can kind of get a sense. And then we'll move on to a, some <laughs> another cool skill. Um, it was not that far back. Sorry, friends. Um, I think it's about right here. Okay. So I, I, I must have gone back and gotten the original because uh, I was able to sharpen it up quite a bit. So anyway, um, awesome. And just remember in levels, you bring the things toward the bottom of the hill and then you kind of adjust them until um, it fits. Um, while we're on levels, let me show you real fast. If you want to, uh, if you have an image where the color has faded poorly, um, so sometimes you get like a red tint, like like this one, or or, or a yellow tint. Um, for 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 these ones, um, if you go to adjustments, go to levels, it works. I'd say about eighty percent of the time, pretty well. Right here, it says RGB, and it breaks color when it has when it comes to light is broken up into red, green, and blue. If you do each one of these separately and just bring the little um, uh, sliders to the bottom of the hill for each color separately, red, green, and blue. It often will clean up your colors really well. So there's the original and there's your color corrected. Um, it also will kind of enhance or, or, or sharpen the image. Sometimes you want that other times you don't. So um, in, in this case, I, I think it, it sharpened it nicely, but um, in some instances, um, uh, it, it makes it uh, have too much contrast and you lose some of the original uh, photo. So if that were the case, um, what you do is, is, is once you get it um, the way you like it, is um, you, uh, you do a um, select all, there's a few different ways you can do it. I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, so select all and then copy. And then when you go, instead of pasting, you do paste, um, paste special. And then, oh, wait. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Copy merged. 
And that means it's going to, uh, if you just hit copy, it's only going to copy the layer on. So copy merge is going to copy the whole, uh, everything you can see. And then you hit paste. And now I have that image here. And right here on this layer um, options, normal is, is, is what you normally have, but you can change it. I'm going to change it down to color. And then what that does is it would change the color of whatever is underneath it. So I don't love like the, the, the contrast and stuff on this original, but um, you can see that it does fix the color, but it keeps the, the saturation, everything of the original. In this case, I actually think it looks better this way, but um, I, I hope that makes sense. It's so hard not being able to see your reactions and things. Um, let's see. Um, yep. Then I, okay. Sorry. Um, so red eye, let's see, do I have red eye on this one? I do not, but I know I've got one with red eye on here somewhere. <laughs> oh, maybe I don't have one in here. Oh, you know what? That one right there has red eye. Okay. So if you have red eye, so so it, it, if I have this picture and, and I wanted to clean it up, the first thing I do is I duplicate the layer um, so that I can always go back to the original. Um, I'd probably run some edits. Um, the thing I actually use the most is under filter, it's camera raw filter. Um, I, I use this a ton, um, especially when I'm taking photos and things. It's designed for um, uh, using special formatted um, files um, from cameras, but you can use it on any photo. Usually I'll actually come here and just hit auto and see what it does. And usually I'm like, oh, I, I really like that. Um, it, it does some cool stuff. Um, but under the basic, you, you can adjust the exposure um, in general. You can adjust the, the, the contrast, um, the highlights shadow uh the 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 whites you can adjust your shadows um the texture you can enhance it or decrease it um clarity i don't usually use a ton but every now and then um your saturation and vibrance um, vibrance you can usually bump up a little bit more than saturation um, and still have it look good um so that was the original there's that and you You'll, you'll notice there's some great red eye right there. Um, so I'm gonna hit okay. So, so, so that filter just allows you to do some, uh, a lot of things kind of all at once. So I like kind of coming in and trying to clean up my photo um, just by playing with it. Hit, hit auto first, if you like it, great. If you don't, uh, just play with the sliders. Um, and then for red eye, they have a red eye tool and it is, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, where is it right here? Nope. Oh, they put it up here. Okay, so um, some tools, if they have the little arrow on, uh, next to them, it means that there's other tools that are similar to it. So um, that, that are kind of hidden there. So there's a red eye tool. So if you select the red eye tool, you can zoom in. And again, I'm going to duplicate this layer because so, and a lot of times I'll label my layers. So I'll say, camera raw edit so it's like my, my initial kind of i want to try and enhance this this one i'm going to remove red eye i might just put red eye um all right so then you actually just select the eye and it does it for you which is like just amazing um let's say um sometimes the the, the red eye tool does not work um super well on its own so if that's the case um um, what you can do is you can come in, create a new layer. So it's a, it's a blank one. So this one's like a transparency. So there's like a transparency right over this. And you, you can do a couple of things. You can do um, a brush. <coughs> now it's hard to see. Um, so this brush, um, I, I don't know if you can see that circle. I know it's really hard to see. Um, you can kind of center the brush around the eye, make sure your color 
here. So the, on the left, the, the top color is the color that you're going to be painting with or using. The back color is a background color um, if you're deleting certain things. Um, so I want black because our pupils are black. And then up here, you can change the size of it. You can also change the size by using the right square bracket and the left square bracket. Um, and so you can kind of see that the, the, the size of the brush changing. But up here, you can also change the hardness of it. So 100% hard means if I click, it's going to give me a solid circle. <coughs> if I slide the hardness down, it's going to feather the edges, kind of like that. And that's what we want here. So what we want to do is we want to make our brush a little, like uh, about the, the same size as where the red is. And you can click and it will start to kind of, and you can click again and it will kind of take away some of that red eye. Um, another way you can do it is um, you can kind of paint in like this. And um, you can also go down to um, uh, on your, on your, um, level um, mode, you can select satur uh, saturation or color, um, and then it will just affect the color. Um, so, so, so as you can see up here on the eyebrow, um, it just, black's gonna, you know, like turn turn into a black and white image because um, that's, that's what it would normally look like if you were just painting, but if you change it to color, it's just gonna affect the color. So that, that can be helpful to get rid of red eye as well. Spencer, they okay. ask if, if you would do the process again when you did the first one that it did it automatically, if you would yep. do it a little bit slower so they Perfect. could see what steps you took. Yep, you got it. Thank you. It's so hard without seeing feedback. All right, here we go. So um, what what you do is, is you come down here and it's on the, um, uh, but by default, it's going to be on the spot healing brush tool. So it looks like a little Band-Aid. Um, you click on that and hold. And then it gives you options for other tools and you can click on the red eye tool. Once you have the red eye tool, it gives you, it changes your cursor to a little plus um, with a little eye on it. And what you do is you just click and you select like a box around the eye. Uh, most of the time it will work really well. Sometimes it doesn't work super great, which is why I went through the second method, but often um, this, this works really well. Um, so come in here, you just select, drag it around the eye and it will fill it in for you. Okay. The other question is there is how would you add text to that photo? Great, great question. So now I wanna add text. So right here that the, there's a text I, um, uh, tool. It's, it's a little T for text and you can click and just, um, <laughs> so it adds what's called um, um, lorem ipsum. It's just like dummy text <laughs> when you click, um, but um, you just start typing. So I'm gonna say um, the most wonderful person in the world, except I should probably put it, you know, type it out nicely. In the world, this is my wife, by the way. Um, and so you, you can see it, it just does it all in one long thing. Um, so, so you can come in and hit, you know, return. Um, if, uh, if you, uh, you can double click or, or uh, if you click in the text and hit control A, it selects the text and you can change your color down here. Um, so we need a color that's gonna stand out. Um, let's do yellow, cause I think it'll work well. So, um, ah, now that I can actually see the text, I see that, uh, the most wonderful person in the world. So again, when I click the text, the, the, your options along the top change. Um, and so um, I can uh, change the color here. I can tell it to left align, center, right align. I can change the font. So if I want a, a different font, let's do that one because it's scripty, except it's hard to read. So I actually don't want that one. Um, but you, you can change the font. You can change whether it's italic, regular, bold right here. You can change the size of it. Um, anyway, um, so, so there's your fonts. And then because the font is on its own layer down here, or you know, the, the, that text, pretend like it's a transparency. This top tool here is called the move tool. 
And when you have that one, you can click and you can move things around. So you, you can position it exactly how you want it. Um, another thing with text, you can also um, define an area. So I can click and drag instead of just clicking. And then it'll fill that area, you know, as I type things like, you know, um, great day, you know, um, uh, I need more than that. Um, you know, I guess I can just do the most wonderful person in the world. And notice that like stuff disappeared is because it's kind of hidden down there. Um, anyway, so so the, uh, that's two ways that, that you can add text. Um, if you want to, to, to resize what's visible, you have to have the text tool selected. If I have my move tool selected and I try like adjusting this, it's gonna resize it. Um, by default, if you're using the newest versions um, for the last year or so of Photoshop, it will keep it proportional. Uh, if you're using an older version, it's going to keep it unproportional. So, you know, you might squish the text. Maybe that's what you want. But uh, uh, j j j just be aware that uh, if, if it doesn't automatically keep it in proportion, to, to be aware of that. If you want to squish the text on a, on a newer version, hold down shift and it will uh, allow you to kind of squish it. Um, if you... Um, if you're using an older version, if you hold down shift, it will keep it proportional. So whenever you make an edit, um, like changing the size of something at the top, you'll get a check mark and uh, um, don't do this. So it's like, oh, yep, that's how I want it. I hit the check mark. If I forget and try and do something else, the computer is going to like say, oh, wait, what's going on? Um, oh, sometimes that time it worked. Uh, but 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 sometimes it might start beeping at you like bang, bang. Uh, so anyway, just know that's what is happening there. Um, and we have someone that asked one more time if you'll go through, take an original picture yeah. and copy it. What steps do you do to do that? So you'll have layers. Yeah, great. So let's just close this image here. Um, let's just open up and, well, here we go. Um, we can just delete these layers here. Let me just move this out of the way. Um, so if I just opened this, this document up, okay, so um, in my layers window, and again, if you don't see the layers window, you go up to window and then you can select layers and, and it'll pop it up. Um, if you wanna duplicate it, you can click on it and drag it down to the plus, or you can right click on it and hit duplicate layer. And you can give it, you can give it a name like duplicate or copy or whatever. Um, or um, so that's how you create it. If you want to create a blank layer, you click the little plus down here on the layers window. If you're adding text and you use the text tool, it will automatically create a new layer for text. So I can say, you know, um, Kim as a child. Um, and then, you know, you can create another text layer and, you know, um, isn't she cute? Okay. And then um, you can move uh, oh, you can move it <coughs> where you like it. <coughs> One thing that, that, that uh, especially for family history that, that might be helpful, um, it, if you want to expand your canvas, if I go up to image, instead of image size, I go to canvas size. Let's say I want to add another inch to the bottom of this. So I'm going to come here. Right now, it has a height of 18 inches. I'm going to make it 19. Oop. I'm going to hit OK, and it added an extra inch to the bottom. So then if I wanted, I could, I could put information down here, you know, such as, you know, um, Kim, Sierra, 1984, um, you know, with her mom or something. Um, that's a terrible color now, so I would, you know, want to use a different color like black. Nope. There you go. Anyway, so so um, if you want to include information on an image, you can do that. I know someone mentioned metadata. Metadata is awesome, and you can you you, you can access it and edit it here um, under file and then file info. Bum, bum, bum. You can actually put in um, information um, 
on uh, on the image, and this information will stay with it, even if someone crops. You know, let's say let's say you, you put information on the bottom there. Let's say someone crops that out. Um, if they open it up in any number of programs that can actually read metadata, um, it, it'll still have the information. So you know, if I knew this was taken in Provo, Utah, so. Um, uh, Picture taken in Provo, Utah, Sierra, uh, 1984. Now I, I might actually have a date for that. So if I did, I'd put it, you know, that in of Kimberly Wilson. You know, um, I, I, I could save that. Um, you, you can add copyright information. You, you can see, so in this case, this was a scanned image, but it, if it's taken with a modern camera, it'll have tons of information automatically in it from the camera. Um, and um, anyway, so so th th that, that's how you can edit metadata. Um, it's a great place for, uh, yes, someone mentioned source citation. Absolutely. Um, great place to put that um, uh, with the photos. Um, if you're doing batch um, stuff, I'm not, I'm not going to show it now because we don't, we're, we're almost out of time. Um, but there's a program uh, called Bridge available with Adobe. Um, it lets you just navigate your um, folders on your computer, but you can actually batch edit metadata using Bridge. Um, <clears throat> but that'll have to be for another time. Um, at the beginning, someone asked about adding or removing things from a photo. Um, and I wanted to show, oh, uh, let's see. Mm. Um, well, I guess we can kind of do it here. So, I mean, um, uh, if you want to add something, so let's say I want to add, um, here we go. Let's say, oh, I already, I already do. so let's say I want to take this picture and I want to add my wife as a baby to this picture. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to quickly um, clean up the color because I showed you all how to do that. So um, just to show you again, I go to my levels and then I change the RGB to just red and I slide the end pieces into the bottom of the hills, change it to green, do the same. And I'm just doing this quickly. Most of the time, even just a quick rough one does a pretty good job. If it doesn't quite do it right, you can play with all of them a little bit to get a better image. Okay, great. I love that. I think that's wonderful. So I'm going to select those two layers. I'm going to right click and hit merge layers. Let's see. <laughs> merge layers. Now I'm going to select it. So uh, edit, uh, sorry, under select all. And then I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to come over here to this image and I'm going to hit paste. Awesome. So now I've pasted this image. It's created its own layer so I can move it around. Now let's say I want her to be peeking out from behind his shoulder. First, I want her a little bit bigger. Okay. And then um, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to mask this image. So um, what that means is down here on the layers, there's this little um, white box with a black circle in it. So I'm going to click that, and you notice next to it, it creates a um, a second canvas. And if, if I click on the different ones, you can see that one of them's outlined or the other one's outlined. If this mask layer is outlined, I can color on it with black and white. So I'm going to take a brush tool. I'm going to make it larger using the right square bracket. And if you if you use black, it will erase. Um, what's there. And if you use white, so if I come down here, you can hit this little um, arrow to switch my colors, or you can hit X on your keyboard that will also switch them. I'm like, oh, actually, I want that part there, which is really nice because then if I'm erasing, you know, if I were just erasing, um, if I were just erasing and I, oops, I accidentally did that, you know, I'd have to just hit undo and have maybe have to erase a bunch more. Or uh, but but with with a mask, I can just hit X and it gives me white and I can bring that back. So I'm going to not use such a. So there we go. So. I'm going to 
kind of just quick, I, I'm just going to do a quick job right now just to kind of give you an idea. But 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 you can you you can zoom in. Uh, you, you zoom in using the zoom tool, or you can hold Control and Alt on your keyboard and use your mouse wheel. Is what I usually do. Um, left bracket, so you can you can actually zoom in really far and do a really good job. I'm doing it really quick here, but you can actually um, kind of cut someone out um, using this method. Um, and then let's say I want her to kind of be peeking from behind his shoulder. I want to be able to see him um, beneath me. So I'm going to change uh, the opacity. I'm going to take it down so I can kind of see what the opacity is. And I'm going to come in here and click back here on the mask. And I'm going to kind of outline his shoulder here. and kind of color it in, make it a little bit bigger. And now I can increase the opacity again. And there she is kind of peeking out from behind his shoulder. Uh, um, there's a lot of different ways to select things in Photoshop. Um, using a, um, a mask is one way. Another way to select things, so I'm gonna delete this. Let's say I just want to select my person here. If you're using the, the newest versions of Photoshop, they have some really cool tools. This object selection tool, um, you, so if you click on it, oh, my computer's slowing down. All right. Um, you just kind of select what you want and it automatically says, oh, you're probably going to select this person. So wait for it. Wait for it. My computer is suddenly going slow. Usually it's actually pretty quick for something like this. Might be because this is a really large photo. <laughs> okay, well, this is taking a really long time. Normally it's really zippy. I think my computer is just slowing down here. Um, but that um, I hit escape, so I canceled that. But but that, that would actually normally select him and leave the background not selected. Um, you can, uh, if, if you like drawing, oh, it, it actually did it. Oh, look at that. So these little marching ants mean, oh, they've selected him. So then I could copy, um, copy and then paste. And then if I hit the background, we just have Elder Wilson here. So, all right, um, let's see. I hope that's helpful for you. Um, before we go, I actually wanna show you something else that isn't related to Photoshop, um, but um, I, I think it's really pertinent. Um, one thing people um, have asked me is, oh, how do you colorize or restore images? I've done it and I've, I've spent hours and hours working on it in Photoshop and, and it's okay. But um, uh, my heritage actually has some cool tools. Um, and if you're not familiar with, with them, I want to show you how magical it is. Um, Cause I don't know how else to describe it other than magical. So I'm going to come in here. So if you have a MyHeritage account, you can sign in and then you go under family tree and my photos. I'm gonna hit upload and I'm gonna drag and drop a photo so you can see it real time. This is my great uncle Larry and my great uncle Al. Um, when they were kids, I'm gonna hit finish. So it uploads the photo and it does a lot of things that normally I would spend hours doing in Photoshop in a few seconds. Um, so here's an image. I'm going to hit enhance and it's going to um, sharpen the image, particularly faces and things. And it'll take a second to do, but um, all right, it's done. So there's the original and there's the enhanced one. And there's not a ton that you can tell, but if you look at this, so there's my uncle Al's face. If I slide by it, it really enhances it. It's not always perfect. This one did okay. So, uh, 
some images it's just completely amazing but then this one is the most magical i hit colorize and it's going to colorize this image for you and to me that is magic i could spend hours and hours and hours and i could do this in photoshop little by little every little piece of color but this is just amazing to me um and is it's, it's magical and and so if you have a my heritage account um great resource um uh uh uh, they are a partner with Family Search. If you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you can sign up for an account with them for free. And they and you can then link this to your family tree and stuff if you want to. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll use this and then I, I'll download it and, and edit it in Photoshop afterward because it won't get everything right. You know, it might get the hair color or, or eye color wrong. And then in Photoshop, I could go in and, and update that. Um, we have... Um, Three minutes left. Um, I want to see, is there anything else that I missed? Sharpening, general cleanup. Um, real quick on general cleanup uh, for um, an old photo. So let's open this one here. Start closing some of these. That's probably why it's going so slow. Um, your best friend on general cleanup is going to be uh, the, this uh, Band-Aid tool. It's called the Spot Healing Brush. It's the same spot as the Red Eye tool. By default, it will have, it looks like a little Band-Aid with a spot behind it. Oh, this is my cleaned up one. I already cleaned this one up. <laughs> let, me, let me grab... Uh, So this one here, <coughs> so um, there's lots of scratches and, um, and things like that. Um, just do a quick uh, adjustment it's real fast, just to try and make it easier to see. Okay. Um, So if I use this spot healing brush tool, it takes some time, especially if it's really, you know, kind of like uh, bad like this, but it's magic. You just color over the spots and they disappear. Um, sometimes you have to do what's called the clone stamp where you can say, oh, pull from colors next to you. But this tool in and of itself will get rid of more um, blemishes and things so easily that it's just amazing. Um, Anyway, it, it, it takes time uh, to kind of go in, um, but I can even go through the eye usually and it will kind of recognize, oh, that's still part of an eye. Um, anyway, um, you can be as detailed or, or not detailed as you want. Um, I have cleaned this image up completely and gotten rid of all the stuff along the couch and everything. Um, 